Hello, and welcome to Bluetooth, where we talk all things blue. Uh, today's edition of Transfer Talk is mainly going to be focused on Dominic Solanke's loan to Vitesse Arnhem. But before we get to that, let's begin with Baba Rahman. And a few days ago, I did report to you that Baba Rahman has basically agreed to join Chelsea, and it's basically a done deal. However, nothing's happened in, in the past three, in two or three days. There really hasn't been any more news, other than, you know, apparently he's having a medical, and now his agent has come out and said that, you know, Baba Rahman has agreed personal terms with Chelsea. It's just the two clubs that have to agree on a fee for him. So, it does look like the deal will, you know, it will happen. But I don't know how long it will take, because I, I really did expect it to be finalized by now or around this time. But I am still hopeful that the, that the deal will be finalized before our Premier League uh, opener against Swansea City. And even though he won't be starting, because obviously we've got Aspilicueta, you know, he will add some good reinforcement and some depth to our squad, which is great to see. Uh, in other news... <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's John Stones. Um, as I've said previously, he seems to be in every single Transfer Talk video. Uh, but it's basically a repetition of the same news I've been del that I've been delivering over the past few videos, I think. It's just that Chelsea are lining up a third £30 million bid. But for some reason, this is just being reported every single day. Because, of course, for the media and for the journalists out there, you know, John Stones is like the treasure that they can write about and get views on and get money on. Because that's kind of the big transfer that's happening with Chelsea right now. So, you know, it is being reported every single day that Chelsea are lining up a third bid of £30 million. Chelsea are lining up a third bid, blah, blah, blah. So, it's just another daily reminder, I guess. Now, but as I said, I've expressed my views on John Stones before. But just uh, to summarize, I don't think he's worth £30 million. But I do think Chelsea will bid for him. And if Chelsea do get him for £30 million, I don't think I'll be overly excited about it. But at the same time, I don't think I'll be too sad about it, because he is a quality player. But I'll talk more about my views on him if we do sign him. And, you know, in the future, if we do sign him, I will, I will talk more about him. But let's just get rid of him. We've talked so much about John Stones. Just get rid of him. <laughs> uh, in other news is Mohamed Salah, who we've talked about for, for forever now, basically. Uh... As I've already told you guys, there's this whole legal dispute with Fiorentina, AS Roma, and Chelsea, but apparently, Mohamed Salah has been spotted in training with AS Roma. So this gets really interesting, because the transfer isn't finalized yet, and there is still this huge legal dispute going on. And just, yet, just yesterday, Fiorentina's manager said, you know, Mohamed Salah should come to our thing, we're legally, you know, bound to get him. But, uh, by the way, here's the photo. Uh, I don't know if this was a photo by paparazzi or whatever, but Muhammad, as you can see clearly, Mohamed Salah is there in an AS Roma shirt, uh, training with fellow AS Roma teammates. And I'm sorry for the poor quality, I can't really zoom in for some reason, but I will link this into the description down below, so you guys can check it out for yourself if you're unable to see it from this distance. But he, he has been spotted AS Roma, so I do think he will go to AS Roma, and, and as I've said before, if he does leave for AS Roma, it will be on a one-year loan, with an option to buy him a season later. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <sighs> uh, yeah, with an option to buy him a season later. Uh, in my opinion, I do think Mohamed Salah will eventually go to AS Roma, despite this whole legal you know, situation with Fiorentina. But, you know, anything can happen. And I do think this situation, this, you know, this whole Mohamed Salah thing is gonna just you know, keep going until the end of the window and it's gonna be one of those things at the last day of the window or like the last week of the window th they're finally gonna come to an agreement so I do have a feeling this is just gonna stretch on for ages but we'll see what happens <laughs> and finally we get to the main news of the day uh, and there is a reason I left this for the end but I'll get to that later so Mohamed Salah, Mohamed Salah, what do I say? Uh, Dominic Solanke has been loaned out to Vitesse Arnhem if you don't know who he is He's a 17, maybe, I think he's 18 now. Yeah, he's a young striker for Chelsea, homegrown, through our youth academy. He scored over 40 goals last season. He's, he was one of our, you know, just beasts in the youth team last season. And he did get his Premier League debut when the title was wrapped up as well. And to be honest, 
uh, I'm disappointed with this. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because I really, really did think, Ma uh, not Mama Salah, Jesus man. Uh, <laughs> I, did, I did think uh, Dominic Solanke would get a chance uh, this season, especially looking at our three strikers. And I have expressed my concern over our current selection of strikers before. If you go back to the Chelsea versus Arsenal match review, I talk extensively about it. <laughs> but I will just talk about it a bit more right now, because I think it's quite relevant seeing that we have one less striker to pick from. But before, just aside from the whole striker situation, you know, Dominic Solanke is a young, homegrown player. And uh, Mourinho last year has insisted uh, all these young players you know, in five years' time, they should be in the Chelsea starting eleven. And he mentioned uh, Ruben Loftus Cheek, uh, Lewis Baker, and Dominic Solanke. And I know, I, I know that Lewis Baker did go on loan, so and I guess Dominic Solanke going on loan shouldn't be a big surprise. But you know, obviously, firstly, Ruben Loftus Cheek will be staying. <laughs> Let me just clarify that. But in terms of Dominic Solanke, uh, he did perform really well for the youth team last season, and I guess it's good that he's getting some first team of you know some really competitive football because it's one thing to perform well in the under 21s it's another to go you know into the the era de visi and perform well into a league into like a proper you know senior league so it'll be good to see interesting to see how he does there but uh two things let me split my whole talk into two things firstly i would have loved to see him stay at chelsea you know i know he's 18 but because of our shortage of strikers, but also because I want to see some of our homegrown players come up, maybe it is a bit naive of me to think that, because he is only 18. Maybe, you know, the better thing is for him to get some experience, some first-team experience elsewhere. But just for me, I thought he was going to stay. I genuinely did think he was going to stay, and I thought he'd get a chance, so I'm a, dis I'm a bit disappointed. Uh, secondly, speaking of our strikers, um, let me just reiterate this point. Chelsea have a shortage of strikers. Right? And that's my opinion. Mourinho obviously thinks not. Mourinho has repeatedly stated in, in public that Chelsea have enough strikers. If Diego Costa gets injured, he's more than happy for Loic Remy and Falcao to come and fill in for, for, for Costa. And the, you know, especially you know, after a loss against Arsenal, I just don't find that very convincing. And because I've said this before, Loic Remy is a great super sub. He's someone that you can throw on in the, in the last 20 minutes of the game. 20 minutes of the game. He'll bring so much pace and energy to the game. And he'll probably, you know, he might grab a goal. And he's a great super sub because he can inject some pace and energy into a game. And it's especially as a substitute because the opposition's already a bit tired. And he's coming on as this energetic bolt of lightning. Uh, but he's not good enough to start as our striker in our starting 11, and I've said this before, and it's just been reinforced by our loss against Arsenal. By the way, if you haven't watched the game, uh, just, <laughs> I'll summarize Lloyd Remy's performance. He was offside 99% of the game. Literally, the amount of offsides that we were handed was just insane. Every time he, he touched the ball, he was offside. It was so frustrating. And his one uh, the one good thing he did was his cross for Ring, for Ramirez, and Ramirez, of course, headed it wide from like one yard away. Uh, the frustrations, uh, but yeah, Louis Remy, he he's just not someone like. Let me put it this way: uh, we look at some of the best teams around Europe, uh, your Real Madrids, your Bayern Munichs, your Barcelonas, your Atletico Madrids, and for those teams. They're competing at the highest level, and by, and by that I mean in Europe. They're the team that usually get to quarterfinals and definitely, and, no, definitely quarterfinals and usually to the semifinals and sometimes to the finals as well. And do you think, just think about it like this, if Loic Remy was a striker of Bayern Munich, was a striker of Barcelona, was a striker of Real Madrid, do you have confidence in that team to get to the Champions League semifinal? I just don't. If you say Diego Costa, then, I, then, yeah, I do think there's a possibility. In fact, Atletico Madrid had Diego Costa just two seasons ago, and of course they did very, very well. They got to the final of the Champions League. Um, but I know we do have Costa, but he is injury-prone. And if he is injury-prone on an important game, for instance, the Community Shield, then we're screwed. That, that's the only way I see it. I just don't see us being able to play that attacking football, that 
that we want to play, that we did play last season for the first half, and that, 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 that I don't know what to say, but just basically, I feel like whenever Diego Costa's injured, whenever we have to put on Loic Remy as our starting eleven, th those are the games where Chelsea play defensive because we don't have that, just that ability going forward. Even though we still have player, players like Hazard, players like Fabregas, players like you know, Oscar. Of course, in the Arsenal game, we actually did dominate possession. We were the we were the team with the initiative, you know, getting the shots done, controlling the play, but. Without someone like Costa, without that finish, we just don't get a goal. And it's frustrating, really, you know. And I've had this concern last season as well with our strikers. Of course, we had Drogba, uh, Falcao and Costa instead of Falcao. Uh, but, uh, what's that? Last season, I, I was a bit concerned about our strikers. But we won the league. I'm very happy with that. And last season, we were a bit lucky, I think, in terms of Injuries. Actually, maybe not for the striker position, because all three strikers did get injured uh, in, in one point of the season. But I just don't have confidence in this current Chelsea strikers, in, in the current three, to be able to come to win the league and get to the Champions League semi-finals and get to the... And when I say semi-finals, I mean at least the semi-finals. And by the semi-finals to the FA Cup and the semi-finals to the Capital Longa. Because that's where we really want to be going. Because we are one of the best teams in England. There's no doubt about it. We should be getting to you know, semi-finals in these top prestigious competitions. And we really want to try and win back-to-back -back titles. But, you know, I just don't see us doing it with our current strikers. And I really do hope... Uh, Mourinho or someone in the Chelsea board realizes that or you know has the same thought as me and goes out and, and invests uh, and especially with Dominic Solanke now gone we have no depth at all I mean we do have depth maybe we just don't have enough quality in our depth and I guess Dominic Solanke could have just been one of those players that you throw on in the 80th minute to give him you know an opportunity to shine and he takes it because he doesn't get a lot of opportunities, especially youngsters. They're so keen and eager to shine, to show the manager what they can do, that they can sometimes be like the hidden treasure in a team to get that goal when you need them to. Uh, but I've talked about Lloyd Grammy. Let me talk about Falcao as well. Of course, he's, Falcao is more of a temporary solution to our striker situation because he's only on a loan for one year. And he's 29 years old right now, so I don't see Chelsea signing Falcao further, even if he does perform very well. And speaking of his performances, I do think he will perform well. I do think he's going to get over, depending on how many, how much game time he gets. Uh, if he does get a reasonable amount of time, I do think he, he can. He has the capability to get over 10 goals for Chelsea next season, uh, or this season. And his preseason has been pretty good. Against Arsenal, when he came on, he looked a lot better. 20 times better than Loic Remy. <laughs> but to be fair, like everyone looked better than Loic Remy. Uh, but I do have faith in Falcao. I do think he's going to be very, very good. But I don't think he's going to bring what Diego Costa brings to the table, what Lionel Messi or Karim Benzema, you know, those world-class strikers in those teams that I mentioned before, you know, those top strikers. I don't think he, he, he'll bring what those, you know, quality, quality strikers bring. And I think that's what Chelsea need because Diego Costa has a history of being, being injury-prone and it'll... It will just be so, so, what's the word? Just so sad to see Chelsea miss out on the title or to miss out on a Champions League position and by the end, like the Champions League semifinals because Costa gets injured or something like that. And that, that'll just be heartbreaking. But we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the transfer window. And of course, uh, every day I will be posting a transfer talk, updating you on everything that happens, all things Chelsea. Except tomorrow, because uh, obviously there's a Chelsea-Fiorentina game at 8 o'clock uh, UK time. So be sure to watch that, I will. And after I do watch it, I'll be posting a match review on it. That'll be our final preseason game. And we'll th this Saturday we'll be going into our Premier League uh, opener against Swansea City. So it'll be really, really interesting to see how Mourinho has changed his team how you know how we're how our team is gonna react from our defeat and hopefully we can just demolish Fiorentina. But we'll see what happens. I'll be back with another video tomorrow talking about that game and until then, stay blue.